Let's get it started. <laughs> All right, we are at episode three, thir three, 38, 38. Damn, 30 episodes of this shit. Um, 38 of the Historia Crux. Today, we're going to be talking about Divine Bahamut, and we're going to be talking about Shucks Lost Chapter. Those are the only two things that really came out that are new this week. However, I am not alone, like usual. I am with Blind Eye, and I'm with Edwin with Large. Say hello, guys. Good evening, everybody. Hello, what up, what up? So, t so, if you're watching this on the Twitch side, make sure to follow and possibly subscribe. If you're watching this on the YouTube side, which will be uploaded later, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you want to check out the show, make sure to check the Twitch link that I will be posting in the description. But let's get on with the stream. So, we got Divine Bahamut that came out last... Actually, last Tuesday, funny enough. Yeah, I think... No, it was last Thursday. Yeah, last Thursday it came out. Divine Bahamut came out last Thursday. And we got four C90s, two new BT pluses, one returning BT plus, and a new LD and a new BT plus. But we have um, we have the first character that got their BT plus in rerun and LD, which is Yuna. Yuna got a rework. She got a C90, and she of course got a BT plus. Of course, the FF10 guy Blind Eye is here to talk about her. So Blind Eye, why don't you take it away? All right, uh, Yuna got mostly a damage rework. Her skill one and skill two, to my knowledge, remain unchanged for the most part. Uh, her LD and the two Brave and HP attack variants that come with it was what got touched. Uh, her LD got more dumps, uh, pretty standard, and now has uh, four dumps. Uh, I believe it had Brave gains in between. They might have increased that, but um, it's four dumps. Uh, it caps consistently because there's brave gains in between so you know it's pretty good um and then her brave and hp attacks both of them used to do two dumps they now do three and um yeah uh oh they also filled the ex gauge as well and then the ex attacks and she got c90 uh it has five hp dumps it still batteries the party it's not a button you want to press because before that thing was like one hp attack <laughs> If <laughs> you didn't want to press that button at all. Uh, alongside um, her rework, she also got the BT Plus, as Cross mentioned. Um, the BT Plus upgrades she got is uh, pretty uh, marginal, in my opinion. Uh, compared to, I guess, everybody else who got BT Plus upgrades. Uh, she got a 10% HP damage uh, increase in general, like on the BT Plus 2 out of 3. And she also got the uh, the Garnet and Bart's effect, where you get a Brave gain at the end of your turn based on HP damage. It's pretty nice. I mean, it helps your party uh, consistently cap when it's their turns and whatnot. Overall, Yuna's in a clunky position. We'll go over that with her uh, pros and cons. Uh, speaking of, uh, her pros... She has encouragement armor. It's amazing. Uh, brave battery on a character that um, doesn't really got or doesn't really have brave gains. Uh, her C88, which I forgot to mention, I apologize, does give uh, ten percent. No, it doesn't even give ten percent. <laughs> so she has no brave gains at all in her kit. Uh, another pro, she has a staff ultimate weapon, and I know with. Uh, Garnet and a couple of other uh, staff wielders that I won't mention. Uh, it's a pretty good uh, weapon that a lot of people, 5 out of 5. So, um, yeah. Um, another pro, the BT effect plus the high armor still gives her a really high HP damage limit. Like, I know people are talking about, like, Ramza's HP damage limit. It is pretty high up there still. I mean, it's not better than Ramza, but it's definitely high up there. Another pro is that she has a, uh, like, frequent battery across her whole kit. And uh, she has both forms of healings, uh, has another pro. Uh, she has, like, a very uh, low HP region, but she has, like, a burst heal with her skill, too. And uh, another thing, yeah, she has a lot of pros. Uh, she can extend everyone's buffs. I feel like a lot of people are, like glossing over that right now but asuna does extend buff so that's something you definitely don't want to um overlook and now let's go to cons because uh there's a lot of pros a uh, con i did mention that uh she had a uh, hp region and uh burst healing unfortunately that hp region is low so that is a con it's only five percent 
her second con, which uh, went over why I think she's clunky. Um, her BT effect, the big uh, bulk of it, which is the HP damage limit, your party cannot have debuffs. And now you're probably thinking, well, you know, she has Asuna, so she can just cleanse it, right? That's still a turn she has to do to uh, essentially cleanse the debuffs. So in a lot of scenarios that I've tested her, I found it better just to bring like a debuff immunity character like Ignis or Lena with her. So it's, it's the con that I'm going to leave there. Uh, another con, which um, some people are sort of glossing over due to garbage time. Uh, she's still reliant on her artifacts. Uh, her Embrave is really crap without uh, Charge Desuna. That gives 40% Embrave to herself. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'll just leave that there. You know, if people are saying that artifacts are kind of crap and you have Yuna and you're uh, willing to green her eventually or have her greened, it's a pretty good damage boost if you have Charge Desuna boost. <laughs> and then lastly... She's reliant on Brave Gains uh, throughout her kit, but she doesn't buff Brave Gains, like, at all. It's... yeah. <laughs> and that's all I really have to say about Yuna. <laughs> no Brave Gain up, instant trash, Alfie. <laughs> uh... <laughs> what are your guys' thoughts on Yuna? Did you guys uh, green her? Do you have her? What are you guys planning to do with her? So I have her. I have her entire kit, I have her BC, I have her, I have her blue. But I decided not to green her because I want to wait until her FR iteration where iteration where her biggest issue gets fixed. Like you mentioned, the whole like, okay, her BT effect is really good. However, if your party gets debuffed, well then the BT effect gets neutered like that, right? And I kinda yeah. I that's the one biggest thing I hate about Yuna's BT effect, because like I used to use Yuna a lot when she came out with her BT. And I was like, her her BT effect is really good, yes. However, the moment she gets debuffed, or anyone gets debuffed, oh, the effect gets uh, halved. It just gets halved. And I hated that, because when you're fighting a boss that loves to spam debuffs or have, like, threshold-related debuffs, you have to waste that one turn to get rid of the debuff. That potentially can also be a turn of a BT duration going down. So that's my yep. thoughts on Yuna right now. I think she's, I think she's, a decent investment, but definitely not like uh, something I would like recommend someone to do right now. I would honestly tell them to wait till later, where FR iteration. Yeah, I think uh, that's the same shit that I'm gonna say. That just <laughs> wait for FR. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Fucking hell. Yeah, I, so, think, I think more so like if someone has her already, mm -hmm. like it's it's a free upgrade. If not, I mean she gets a pretty nice tuning pass uh in the FR era and her bat her burst does rerun on that. It's a separate banner, so that'd probably be yeah. more favorable mm -hmm. to just pursue her BT by then. Mm hmm And I, I bet that's the banner where Blind Eye is gonna pull, right? You know it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, I guess everything that needs to be said is already mentioned mostly by Blind Eye and then Cross had, had mentioned. So I'm gonna applaud every single uh, green Yuna out there who made the co-ops even faster. That's for sure. Oh yeah, she makes co-ops go extremely fast. <laughs> Surprise! Oh, for, sure. for this one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for this one. Yuna mm mid. -hmm. Yuna... Uh, <laughs> 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 Alright. So, Yuna is not the only BT Plus on this, event, on this no. event. The new BT Plus is a character that, you know, disappeared for a long, long time. She was the the main DPS of the 35 CP era. Everyone had her in the 35 CP. Well, mostly everyone had her in the 35 CP era. She disappeared for, I want to say, like, three eras, honestly, because, like, no one was really using her in those three eras. But we have Prish's, uh, we have Prish, who got a C9, a rework, an LD, and a BT. She got all that in one event. God damn. So, so Prish is, I, I know I made a video about her like a while, like a week ago, but to give you a rundown of who, what Prish is, that Prish is a melee magic DPS. It's something that, that we're, they were trying to be unique with, but it hasn't really aged well going into the game because you know how resistances work now and stuff like that. But that's, but that's her whole shtick. 
the rework that she got actually made it so that she now, you know, does more damage <laughs> like every other C90. The thing is now was that her skills in her regular form now are free are free skill uses. You don't have to waste the skill, then you, you don't have to waste skill using one of them. And then after the you use that free skill, it transforms into the other skill. So if you use one limb punch, her skill one, it will be free skill. And then the next skill after that isn't free. And then you could just immediately try go into the second version of her skills. Uh her LD makes it so that first off, that thing does like a lot of damage. <laughs> that thing has like I think like the highest amount of HP attacks in the game, like I think eleven or twelve in general. But not only does does it do that, it also gives her a new buff called Hundred Fist. And what it does is that every brave hit Prish does, she gets an additional brave hit from it. Meaning that the first brave hit that that every brave hit that she does, she's getting an additional one. This also affects her calls because her calls make it so that everyone in the party gets this, not just the caller. So that's a nice change. Uh, that's a nice thing that she gets. Her BT effect is basically what her LD does, except that the, the add-on to it is that it gives the party basically what the LD call gives the party too. Her additional brave hits thing. So that's also nice. I didn't mention her EX because her EX, the only thing her EX really does is that it gets increased HP attacks and it gives you a free skill use. That's really it. My thoughts on Prish, she is... <laughs> Damn, she, gl she glued up. Because, like, the thing about Prish before is that, in my opinion, I think she was just alright. I didn't think she was too amazing or anything like that. But, honestly, in my opinion, I know a lot of people saying, you know, we're around FR era and stuff like that. And FR units are... And this is a dumb take that FR... That any character before FR isn't really that great. But I will definitely say that is not true. Prish definitely has the ability to keep up. She does a lot of damage. She's very, she's very fluid. She's very fun to play. I definitely do think that that LD attack is pretty ridiculous. The fact of it's 12 HP attacks and that she brain gains in between all those attacks and you can hit up to like 400 mil or like, I, I think like there's a clip out there that's like when she's hitting like 10, uh, 10, 10 mil, like 10 mil on that one LD, which is really insane. Uh, pros, she does a lot of damage. She does so much. She does a lot of damage. She's very flex she's very fluid. She again, like I mentioned before, the whole like hitting two to hitting two types of attack types isn't really that good, but I guess it's, it's somewhat of a pro, maybe. I'm not sure. Um she impairs all elements, so that's nice. So that way she's able to hit she's able to hit those elements easier. BT effect is nice at HP cap up of 20%. Nice on the DPS. She's also Fist Ultimate Weapon, which Fist Ultimate Weapon isn't w really the w more like popular top three ones, like, you know, Unique, Great Sword, and Sword. However, it is still a pretty good Ultimate Weapon type. Her cons is that while she does do a lot of good damage, I think that in like every DPS, she obviously needs the blue armor. She definitely wants the Ultimate Weapon. You, all, you want that indeed. Uh, she, it, she, while I did say she is fluid, she can definitely not be, you know, user friendly in some people's eyes because, you know, you have the skill changing and stuff like that with, with her Howling Fist Transfiction and all that stuff. And her BT Aura, while it is nice, it's only 10 turns. And with the kit that she has, where she's kind of jumping around some, like she has instant turn on her S1 or S2, it can kind of be really, it could kind of be annoying to use her BT Aura like that if you're going to just use her BT effect. And a personal con and another con for me personally is is that her LD attack it's it's kind of weird when you have to press that button because like you either use it as a really big uh, nuke button or you just have it on standby and by the time you have it on standby or you use the LD the boss is already dead so that's another issue with pressure I have but personally for me I think she's pretty I think she's not I won't say she's meta but she is definitely competitive with like the big DPSs that we have like Tidus and all that stuff. Uh, what's your guys' opinion on, per on Prish? Mm, I think I'm gonna add as well that her LD call is not too shabby as well. Like, it does a sh first of all, it does a shit ton of damage. And uh, it has a, like, uh, what was it again? Like, HP damage up, like, bravery damage up, and overflow and shit. And it also has uh, her, her, her new shtick where it, uh, where it's gonna add an additional brave hit, so yeah, it's a nice LD call if you manage to get Prish. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I'll double down on that, uh, LD Call. One thing you forgot to note that I uh, found pretty nice. I don't have Frisch uh, BT, but like I have messed around with her at LD. Uh, is her EX, I believe, actually extends her buffs by like a oh, ridiculous yeah, amount. Oh, yeah, she, ha she has buff extensions. Yeah. Oh. And she does have a crit rate 100% buff, and I think the attack is... No, the attack is kind of low, never mind. But uh, that includes her 100 fist, her LD, so... I mean, if you're using the EX, like, at worst, your LD is literally just, like, a damage move. You don't have to use it most of the time to refresh uh, her uh, buff, because she's just, like, extending it with her EX. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's all I really got to say. You covered her points pretty perfectly, Cross. Yeah, I think uh, I think one thing though is that, I I I know a lot of I still think it's a stupid take. Oh yeah, there's also that take looming around where she's like Magic Tifa. Oh, oh my, I hate that shit. Oh my, I hate that. Mm. But um, but the thing about Prish is that I'm not gonna deny if someone were to get into the game and, and I know I said she's not user friendly, but if someone can figure out how to play Prish. I would say for the first early month of Shinryu, she can serve you like the, for every fight in that in that uh, in that month because she does a lot of damage. Her LD in force time does like I think I've seen a clip of her LD do like half of the boss's health. There's also I know this is when she got force enhancements. I think there's that one clip of her one shotting a boss rush, <laughs> not boss rush. Her one shotting a six man fight. <laughs> <laughs> but uh. Right now, I think if you invest in Prish, you won't regret it. If you have other competitive, if you have other DPSs like Tita and stuff, then you don't need her. She will do well in Shimmer era. She doesn't have like, I mean, like she does have instant turn her S1, S2, and that's one thing that's about the Shimmer era that's kind of sucks about having instant turn rate abilities. But she doesn't necessarily turn hog. And besides, you can play her multiple different ways. S, you can play her single target focus or multi target focus. That's one thing I didn't mention, is that you have. Two ways to play her. You can play it either fo single target focused or AOE focused because you have detonation. You have detonation. Uh, I think it's detonation blow fist. The back no, it's backhand blow something. I don't remember the second one's name. <laughs> I always forget the second one's name because I don't. I don't really use it that much. But you can use her as single target based or AOE based. But but enough about me harping about Prish. We have two other characters to talk about, and the LD companion on Prish's banner is Fran. And uh, I don't know who's gonna. I I honestly don't know what Fran got. Do you guys have any idea uh, what Fran got? I can I can go with Fran. It's overall a pretty uh, modest uh, rework in my opinion, and I'm going to show you guys why. So uh, Fran's rework. Uh, to my knowledge, her LD did not get touched at all, so it was her base skills, and then obviously she got C85, so her EX got touched. Uh, her skills... Uh, skill 1 has 4 dumps. It has uh, splash damage on it, 50%, so nothing uh, too crazy. Uh, whip Kick, which is her skill 2, now has 4 dumps as well, and all 4 of them are split. Uh, her EX also got four dumps and I'm, I'm saying these skills when uh they're plus because uh to plus it you just need to have her viero's punishment at five stacks it's pretty easy to um to get that at five stacks mm -hmm. um what her ex got also on top of the four dumps is uh the buff on was it miss yeah the buff on missed acuity gave the party brave and hp damage so uh she's giving even more i believe to the party it might have been no no, no it, it is party yeah uh her ex buff gives a uh, brave damage and hp damage to the party and that's all her rework got or that's all the rework gave to her uh pros she's a very strong debuffer still i mean she was pretty crazy even before this so i mean that hasn't changed <laughs> Uh, she's very decent at Brave Shaving, and uh, the HP damage output on turns is pretty respectable. Uh, another pro is her debuff maintenance is very easy. Um, mm -hmm. If bosses uh, cleanse it, you can honestly just LD and they're at 3 stacks. Every time someone does damage to that boss, it goes up by 1. So it's very, like, plug and play. Like, you can just inflict it and then your party itself can just boost it up and whatnot or she can help it since her skills do add on to the counter um a con 
this plays into what I said with her pro with the debuff maintenance. She does need a little ramp up time if the bosses cleanse every uh, so often. And the debuff also needs time to uh, obviously reach max stacks. And uh, here's a very nasty con in my opinion. Uh, she has no brave gains in between HP attacks, so it might oh, be harder. Oh yeah, that for is her one thing that she doesn't have. Yeah, and then another con, which I mean, this is personal preference. Uh, she is bow, and uh, Poe is uh, <laughs> Poe. Bow is less favorable, so um, you can take that as you will. But uh, that's the pros and cons for Fran. Uh, what do you guys think? Did you guys pull for her? Did you have her already? And did you guys mess with her? Uh, before we I do feel... that, before before right. you say anything. I, I literally okay so yeah about the clown on me I literally didn't even notice we were we were we were in the wrong chat so uh, <laughs> uh but uh but yeah uh correct me if I'm wrong I think but I think El Franz LD does splash now does it do splash oh yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah I was yeah, gonna okay. say that that was the LD <laughs> that was the LD change yeah, yeah it does splash now <laughs> <laughs> no more alternating brave hits on S2, I believe. I think that's another change she got too. I'm not sure. I think. Alternating. Oh, you mean? Oh, yeah, because before it was like a nine brave plus HP attack. Yeah, that would two alternate. HP attack. Yeah. It's now AOE when it's plus. It's still alternate during its regular, but when it, when you, or when it's plus, it's now AOE. Yeah. Those are good points. Sorry, I forgot to mention that, guys. And thank you, chat. <laughs> yeah, thanks, chat. Uh, I think, in my opinion, about Fran is that, uh, well, you see, <laughs> I mean, she still has the call, but I, I haven't used that call in forever. Honestly, I haven't used that call <laughs> since the first month of C90, uh, Lufinia Plus. But, um, I think she's okay. She's not amazing. She's just okay. Like, uh, Bolt weapon, like come, like, like who, who, like who's gonna build bow ultimate weapon unless either a you like any character that uses bow or b it's for Trey who's the only bow DPS we have in the game technically. I know people are gonna say Fran is a DPS, but she's more of a debuffer honestly. Um, I think the brave gain in between hits is not being there is pretty. It, it, inexcusable i think every, at this point most dp most characters are trying to be dps's or something should have that like at this point it should be like a common thing i don't know why they didn't give it to fran and then her 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 debuff is still nice it's just that i i don't know it's just it, i just feel like it's better if you just have her as a call and rather than the party i'm not saying her damage is bad i just think that having her in party doesn't really stand out ish to me those are those are fair points i didn't mention the call because i mean it didn't get buffed so there was no yeah, reason to talk about buff. it but yeah, i mean it's still, buff, it, it's still though. high up there no buffs so no, yeah no <laughs> aside um i was i was planning to say to say the correction in terms of the ld having splashed the blind eye but since chat already mentioned that i guess uh i'm gonna mention already my thoughts on fran is like uh like ever since like Fran's LD was released, the main contention uh, ever everyone is is hyping up against hyping up on Fran is mostly on that debuff and and it's always there has been a debate where uh whether or not whether or not you would uh, rather bring Fran Fran on the party party in in party or or LD call so that you can have the more potent version of her of our LD debuff, but, but then again, uh, we are already deep into C90 era, and we had more better, better calls. I I would say like more potent calls for for our characters, and I think it's understandable that Fran has been on the sidelines now lately, and I don't think any of you, the two of you, just like Cross mentioned, like uh, it's been a while, it's been a hot minute since they last they last used the uh, Fran call right cross i haven't used yeah, fran's call it. in like <laughs> bro you uh, i heard that no i heard that <laughs> i i heard that <laughs> oh, no. uh Fr fran's call i actually haven't you okay the last yeah. time i used it let me think the last time i used her call 
I think was actually Gilgamesh's fight. And that was the last time I ever used it. After that, I either used Sid Rain's call, Leo call, Cyan call, or the usual Kurisame call. That's the only calls I've uh, used. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. Ever mm -hmm. since like Lila yeah. said and yeah. Diesel came out, like she hasn't been a deep of <laughs> damage oh. of call for me oh. at all. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> There was someone, I don't remember, there was someone who went down bad for Fran's LD call, got her, and then never used her. <laughs> I don't remember who it is, but someone did do that. Mm. And I feel and I feel bad for that, because like, because like, yeah, I'm pretty sure everyone has that effect where like, you go down bad for a character and you end up never using them and you just feel like you've wasted your resources until their next tuning pass. <coughs> Layla. Layla. <laughs> oh, thank God I did not pull her. No. <laughs> like, uh, if if already like since her LD release, like people are more inclined to bring Fran as a call. I think uh, it's more likely that now at deep in C90 era, you're more likely not bringing Fran as well in the party. So there's that's my thoughts, I guess, for Fran. Also, I uh, think I find it funny that uh, she has bow, but. None of her skills or LD or EX uses her bow. You only get to use her to see her use her bow on her HP plus. Remember, um, remember, remember when uh back then when Frank came out, you would spam that shit, <laughs> and like as oh, an off, yeah. as like off damage, like like off like sometimes like passive damage, you just spam that shit. Now you just don't even press it at all. So MF, I'm sorry if I butchered your name, but yeah, he. he MF mentioned like calls like Lilith at time traveling didn't help. Yeah, like yeah. we got more better HP damage, like better debuff calls that enhances the damage. Like, uh, say Lilith uh, Seymour, and I think for an extent as well, like Kurosami. Yeah, oh, what's up? So, nice thank, you for, thank you for thank you for raising that point as well, MF. Yeah, but uh, mm. also, yeah, X Cal made a good point. Uh, Seymour LDCA also kind of ruined it too. Like, uh. Yeah, that's why I mentioned Seymour. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. I'm more likely to use Seymour now. Yeah. Also, never... Fran Feet. Well, shut up. <laughs> 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 Anyways, uh. Celeste, Celeste is the other C90, and I believe she's on Yuna's banner. I know Fran is on, like, Trish's banner. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Got Celeste right. is on. So Celeste yeah. is on the other banner with Yuna. She got a rework, she got a C9, the usual bit, yada, yada, yada. The only real notable change that Celeste got was that her runic is now instant turn rate and her traps are now two HP attacks. They're two HP attacks now. So that's two, that's the two notable. Thank you, <laughs> thank you for the subscription, man. Really appreciate it, uh, Dark Orpheus. Thank you for the, thank you for the subscription. But um, yeah, no, so. Celeste is, Celeste is the, basically the same unit as usual. Uh, there's nothing really sp special to talk about her. I mean, like, she's the sa same niche magic tank that she is. And we know later down the line, she's going to get a BT and she's going to get an FR. Uh, if you already have her, you know her pros and cons. Uh, magic tank, meaning that she can body any magic-related fight. If they're not magic-related, then she kind of her niche is kind of shut down. Uh, she's great sword ultimate weapon, which is nice. She is great sword ultimate weapon. Uh, thank God she is. Uh, plus, uh, her trap being two HP attacks, that is nice too. She still has the ice enchant. Basically, like I mentioned, if you already have Celeste, she got a good she got a good tuning upgrade. If you have her now, then you'll be prepared for when she gets her BTFR. That's only the real thing I could tell you about her. She's not like oh my god busted level. She's just decent uh, at best. What's your guys' thoughts on her? Uh, I messed with her once. Uh, her base skills feel kind of awful to press, except Runic, because uh, her EX charges incredibly fast. Uh, her EX, outside of her uh, follow-up, because that follow-up is very nice, being too dumb. Her EX has six thumbs, and there's Brave Gains in between, so... Um, it's very, it's a very nice button to press. <laughs> Shine Edge, on the other hand, which is her skill one. I'm in an Ice and Peril, so I mean, if you don't want to press her LD, you could press her skill one. It provides her with an HP region, and there's Brave Games in between if I'm 
pretty sure. And I, it also heals the party as well. Yep. So, uh, yeah, I mean, she's a very versatile tank. She's one of these, like, balanced defensive tanks where she can heal your party. Uh, she enchants your party with ice. She imperils ice. Uh, she makes it so that you take less HP damage. She's overall a pretty, uh... A pretty good tank if someone's seeking a tank at this time, if they don't have Zack or um, Guy even. That's a guy? Guy, and then also yeah, Snow. Yeah. <laughs> no, I was thinking more so Bosch, but Guy? I mean, Guy I mean, is also. I mean, the reason why I mentioned I know Guy he's is a tank. He also, he also. No, because he, he also. Enchant enchant. Enchant. Oh, yeah, yeah. Enchant okay, 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 okay. I get what you said. I get what you mean. And unless you thought, unless you thought Bosch and Enchant and Peril. Yeah. Oh, if man. Bosch and Chain and Peril, it better be some physical Enchant. Make that his BT. Make him physical Enchant. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I threw everyone off guard with Guy. They were probably like, you know, he was going to mention Snow or something. And then he was like, wait, what the hell, Guy? <laughs> <laughs> nah, I understand, guy. I understand. <laughs> like, I get you. Like, I think that's... I think everything that Cross and Blind has already mentioned everything but Celis. So, yeah. Celis is solid. I haven't tested her out. The closest is a... Uh, uh, summon the Divine Bomb with farming, but that doesn't count. So, yeah. I really like that uh, S2 is instant turn to get around the EX real quick. But, yeah. That's all I can say. Plus the the LD debuff uh, trap being like more more than one dump is also nice, I guess. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's all. I can see. Imagine having a trap that ha a trap that has one HP attack. Yeah, imagine. Yeah, imagine. <laughs> Furian. Uh, Furian. <laughs> no, Furian. No, Furian's case is that he's a BT unit with HP damage cap up. Okay, then like he gets a pass for that. And then I know, I know, I said, and I know, we know Trey has it too, but Trey has multiple traps, so it's okay. But like, if you have one trap that's just one HP attack, it's just like, it feels like shit. <laughs> and yes, Orange C90 is a uh, early shimmer. It's literally the second fight, like M MF said in the chat. <laughs> uh, Yoshi, you have any thoughts on Celeste? It looks all right. <laughs> Not a game break game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's all the banner mates out of the way. So let's get on to the fight. So the Vine Bahamic is interesting to say the least. So first off, this uh, boss has 60 million HP. Say for Sephiroth 44 mil, this boss has 60 mil. This is a pretty much bigger spike than Safer Sephiroth, honestly, from uh, going from Safer Sephiroth to this. That's actually funny because two fights back to back just had an HP spike. So you have Divine Bahamut and you have these two crystals. These crystals are unkillable, meaning that no matter what you do to them, they will just HP and re and re and like basically re heal all the damage that you did to them. Bahamut has a locked turn, meaning he cannot be delayed. I don't think he can be, he can't even be break delayed, I think. Yeah, he can't even be break delayed. The whole shtick with this fight is that uh, Bahamut, at certain thresholds, will get the orb. And the orb is very weird to explain. It's very weird. It, it, what, but it, what it basically wants you to do is to hit the same target in two consecutive turns. I think that's what it's supposed to be. I, 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 it's really weird to explain. But I'm pretty sure that's the... Because Celeste's ruin accounts for it. There's a bunch, there's some other things that counts for it, but it's very weird to explain it because I'm not sure if you could use, I'm pretty sure you use attacking C65s and then attack again and then the orb will count. This will freeze the orb, it will not tick up the orb, meaning that when, when you don't do the orb condition on another character, the orb will actually unfreeze. This is very crucial because every time this orb comes back, which it comes back on different thresholds, uh, some off turn damage messes with the two consecutive turns. Yeah, that's the yeah, Fre yeah, Fre Freya and uh, Kane do that too. They mess up with it too. Uh, but the thing about the orb is that it disappears, it appears at 79%, then it'll come back later on at I believe 59%, I believe 59 or 49%, and then at 29%, the orb will come back again. However, it's at a one, it's a one orb count, meaning that if Bahama gets one more turn and you don't uh, freeze the orb, you're basically going to die. The 
the other two crystals, they basically sit there and then one crystal basically does Bray Battery, the a Bray Battery is Divine Bahama and the other crystal. The other crystal will do Brave Attacks or if it has over, I believe, 5k Bravery, it will do an HP attack that has a lot of Brave Hits and it will do two HP attacks with it, between it, meaning that any last stand character probably will not survive that unless you have like high ass reductions. The thing about this fight is that <laughs> what makes it difficult is the last stretch, funny enough. It's not the beginning, it's not the middle, it's the last stretch. Because the last stretch, that orb is going to be at 1. If Bahamut gets that 1 turn and you don't kill it and before the orb goes off, you basically wasted like, like I would have said like, how, how much on the average how long this fight should be? Like what, 15 minutes or so? 15 minutes of the fight going through it and you have to restart it again. Bahamut also has a bunch of nasty mechanics where it's unbreakable. <laughs> it's unbreakable. It's it it has I feel like some reason for some reason when Bahamut like does that aura that he gets, it gets like a weird speed increase. It also has the aura goes away at 10 by 10 turns by either the enemy or the or the party, I believe. It should be both party and enemy. But overall, Divine Bahamut, pretty good fight. Pretty good fight. It's just that the last bit of it sucks ass because, like, you got this orb that's at one. And then, the, the, and if you don't kill Bahamut before that orb goes off, you're basically, got, it's basically game over. But uh, what's your guys' thoughts on Divine Bahamut? I guess I'll go first. I think this was a brilliant fight. Uh, the orb being at one when it was at 29% was a major headache because in my initial run, which I used, uh, Tetis, uh, Freya, and Sisney, for the record. I mean, you can tell from that, given that Cross mentioned that uh, follow-up characters make that orb uh, inconsistent. Yeah, I was uh, pretty much uh, walking on a tightrope. <laughs> I had to actually summon first and then BT with uh, uh, with Tetis because one of my um, one of my uh, like runs that uh triggered me just getting annihilated was that like i bt'd and when i bt'd bahama would get a turn immediately after and when i uh got out of Tidus's burst phase uh the orb was at one he had like 12 percent hp and the orb count was at one so you know he went and i blew up and i had to restart <laughs> <laughs> but overall the fight was great uh there's a lot of mechanics like the boss being unbreakable uh, and then, and then I guess the orb just being like incredibly tight. It was very confusing. Like the game did not really, um, address the orb very well. And then the crystals, they probably could have done something a little bit more with the crystals, but I do like that the left one, at least, at least in most of my runs, the left one, uh, threw a brave hit. I don't know why he didn't throw an HP attack, but, uh, it threw a great, like, it threw this attack that did a decent amount of brave hits that capped. Uh, it was very rare that I would like get hit by that and it not cap. <laughs> but overall, the fight has many different approaches, and I mean, it has a lot of health. Like Cross says, you're gonna spend like 15 minutes on this, which is kind of crazy because you know you look back at maybe. Uh, the week before or like two weeks before it and you know we have ryzen's iw which i kid you not i think the average time was like five minutes <laughs> <laughs> five minutes for that whole fight I, I think someone did three minutes that fight was three minutes like that that fight was just that fight literally died it, it had mechanics but it just died yeah so it's it's a nice bit of fresh air we get a fight that's over 10 minutes and it was overall uh, pretty good it gets a thumbs up from me uh indo and yoshi what do you guys think about the fight it looked great even though i smoked it <laughs> <laughs> yeah did you bring darlin here or something nah ramza Wait. garnet quistis oh oh yeah there is that Nady so friend. for, oh, for yeah, the quistis is a so code. for the so for those who uh, who don't know, there is actually a cheese method you can do, and it involves Quistus. So Bahama is delay immune, right? Well, Quistus bypasses that. So if you just want to be that person, you could just make make Quistus deny Bahama turns the whole fight and not worry about the orb. 
I think we shouldn't mention that because someone's going to talk about it in chat. Like, hey, you could cheese this fight with Quistus. <laughs> but I'll uh, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, I, I use Quistus as well. I gotta make use of the 4 out of 5 whip. <laughs> how does that feel anyway? Like a 4 out of 5? Like, how much damage did she do overall? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm coping. That's all I can say. Your gun's not even better, but... <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, you yeah. five out of five your gun yesterday, yeah. right? Yeah, for yeah. Vincent later. Yeah, and for King. <laughs> it's just, like, the gun King. I have right now, just... They don't, like, feel good using, unless it's, like, the only one in the party. Yeah. I mean, uh... If you you use quiz this for against bomb then yeah it's a easy game for you it's just a matter of of quickly killing bomb with before the turn count even though the turn count is quite uh <clears throat> is very manageable like the least of your worries of this fight but without quiz this though this fight is very uh <clears throat> is very not so garbage time-esque like it's very challenging that, especially when you when you try to respect the orb, at the very least. Like, I love how it's it's a very nice change of pace for a type of orb. Like, it, instead of the usual, like, it goes down on your turn, it's it's only on Bahamut's. But then again, I think it encourages the player to, like, do a, a zero turn shit or, like, the usual, like, gi not giving Bahamut a turn, which is also a very popular strat instead of a respecting the orb but i don't know i just i really like this fight to be honest you know the thing about this, this hmm? i got All this right, one comment you. and i was like if that were to happen bahamut would be more aids someone said that imagine if bahamut at bahamut the, the crystals depending on what uh, mm -hmm. percent bahamut's at they would turn warp him <laughs> yeah ima imagine if that oh. <laughs> They should uh, <laughs> let them do the orb. <laughs> let them design the fights. We're gonna love that, huh? Yeah, also... Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. To mention that. You first. No, okay. I, I was just gonna mention, like... so I, I think... Because uh, MF mentioned it, that I got known through that. That, that, I, I, that. I had to deal with that shit. Back to back. Fucking back to back break immune fights. They got away from the whole <laughs> fight. But, like... I mentioned before when that orb was at one. I'm not sure if any of you, wa if all of you watched the the vod I did, the run I did. But I literally saw that orb at one, and I was like, "Fuck this!" Yeah, I literally have, sat there. Selfie. I, yeah, I sat there, spared selfies as to it. Yet, <laughs> Cross, you're already uh, doing a fr gauge charging. Yeah. Shinryu. <laughs> I, I had to get, I had to get ready, man. You gotta get ready. <laughs> yeah, Shinryu practice. Bang off. Listen, you got, you got self pulling up walls, uh, it, okay. cooking with it, cooking Ignis, and uh, dancing Lilith. Garnet follow up, right? Yeah, Garnet. Like, yeah, uh, mm -hmm. praying also water. dancing Panello. You know, she dancing Panello. <laughs> yeah, let's go, dancing Panello. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, yeah, you, you were saying something before I like cut you off because I I know you were trying to say something. Like aside from the usual synergy characters like Krish or Celis, there there's like you got a selection of characters that can also up like help freeze the orb. Like uh, I'm gonna mention a few of them. Like uh, Alice say I think Papalimo can. I don't know. I don't know Papalimo, but I I, I see some usages of Papalimo for this fight. Beatrix, Freya, Zidane, yeah, those characters can uh, help the orb. I think another interesting set of characters that that made me realize that this orb is more diverse than I thought of are characters like um, Locke and Charlotta, since uh, Locke has, like, if you use, like, Locke's um, like AA and then an ability, it can, up to, it will help freeze the orb. And as for Sherlotta, uh, I managed to bring Sherlotta for this fight, and uh, I pressed the E. I think it was around when the orb is now at one turn count. Yeah, I used like Sherlotta's EX, and since it does like brave gravity damage, and then I proceed to do uh, I think it was her Chuck staff. 
it actually freezes the orb. Like, oh I, yeah, I, I did the... see that, and I was like, how the fuck yeah. does that work? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, I guess the EX does like uh, like the bravery damage, so I guess that counts for the for the mechanics for the orb, I guess. So hey, that's I, I think I really like that stuff. Also, if you think like a char a character like Freya will 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 make the hard will make the fight uh, hard. Um, I managed to to bring Freya here, but the uh, the thing is, it kind of feels weird to run Freya here because yeah, sure the the her her jump follow up does ruin it, but I guess the easy trick for this it, the easy workaround for it is just use her LD and then instead of like pressing her special attack just press any skill or HP and that will freeze the orb and oh, also what? like uh, if you timed it right it's somehow like if you if you landed like descending dragon happened and then you press another skill right right before Bahamut's turn it'll also help freeze the orb that's how uh, I remember that so that's that's my sense of it. Uh, one thing to note is uh, you you left out a character, and it's a character uh, you know Cross did green that can manage the orb, and that's mm -hmm. Gilgamesh. Yeah, that is true. He actually can. Yeah. That is true. That is so, true. You know, that's very that's very important knowledge. You know, we can't leave out Greg. <laughs> you know, at least uh, listen. <laughs> Uh, you ever just I use Zell. Oh yeah, Zell's good here too. I, I was gonna upload my Zell run, but that shit took thirty minutes. <laughs> I think Zell. Wait, really? Zell's all right here. I thought he's reliant on breaking care, breaking no, target. You get. You don't have to worry about the free turns. Uh, okay. uh, would oh, Maki, yeah. would Machina count actually, guys? Uh, would his like trap be considered the the second attack for the orb? Uh, probably. Hmm. I don't know. Well, yeah, I, probably. But, but everyone breezy faces and goes ape shit with Makina anyway, so I don't think it really matters. <laughs> That's yeah. true. Most people who probably did it just had like Garnet and Cisne in the party. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, honestly, the one thing I will take away from this is that uh, if Divine, not not Divine Muhammad, the one thing about this that I will take away is that. Is that Square Enix definitely does have the ability to to have the ability to make heart fights hard in C9 Lufinia Plus, but they just like they just miss the nail in the park every time. But this fight felt a nice, refreshing thing. Like the last two fights we got were refreshing. Like they were actually challenging fights that actually made made you worry about mechanics and stuff. Yeah, I mean, I guess like if you didn't bring Quistis, it feels like a different fight, to be honest. Like, Bahamut can have some threatening attacks, especially, like, uh, if you didn't manage to bring any debuffs that will lessen the damage or, you know, the usual HP damage mitigation. But other than that, you know, fight feels... feels alright. Feels alright for me. It's in the middle of the road for me. It's not... It's not as fun as, like, say, Six, six Warrior Quest or Safer Sephiroth, but... It's not the usual, like, boring-ass fight that you usually see on gar Garbage Time. Oh, a sitting like, beat stick? <laughs> <laughs> a yeah. literal sitting beat stick, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, hold up, someone said in the, in the chat, uh, wait, hold up. Don't worry, Noel will get his FR and JP and BT rule that lets him bypass break immunity. Okay, listen. I want my character to be good, but I don't want him to be ignorant. That there's a difference between good and an ignorant, okay? Uh, uh, Prish, Alize, I, I think I... Work with the orb being one turn, Alize hot turns and almost fuck the entire run. Oh yeah, that can happen. Yeah, that can happen. Because Alize, I think like I think someone mentioned like uh, Zidane sucks here because uh, he can't break. But at least uh, unlike. Leviathan or um, or Sephiroth. especially say for Sephiroth, um, the 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 break immunity is not like up every time. Like it's not the entire fight. 
At least you can launch so the boss. Kind of kind of... Yeah, it's like in burst. Yeah, that's... <laughs> At yeah, least you can the launch thing. the boss. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that that yeah. still is the that is like great a terrible synergy. But we're not gonna talk about safe for safe profit anymore. Yeah, but, uh, we, yeah, we, yeah, we but uh I know we wasted so much time on Divine Muhammad, but uh basically general because consistency we all know. One of my favorites is broken and it's amazing. You like okay, you know I'm not getting into this. Fuck you, Bard. Um <laughs> Anyway, we're moving on to Shulk's Lost Chapter. I Oh god. Uh Shulk's Lost Chapter. <laughs> we got Shulk's Lost oh, Chapter. No. Shulk came out like I think what? November? She came out during Bane Cycle. I know she came out during Bane Cycle. She came out during Bane Cycle. Now she's yeah. back. She got a C90 and she got a rework. And then we have the other character, which someone who's been MIA since K her Chaos uh EX Plus, and that is Lulu. Lulu's getting an uh, got a rework and an L D. She also got a C ninety and um it's something. <laughs> it, it's something. So, uh, Blonde, I take it away. Oh, we're starting off with Lulu. Damn. Yeah. All right. The star, the star of the show. All right. I got this. Mm. <clears throat> so, Lulu, as Cross mentioned, has been MIA for basically like three eras. And uh, she got a... <laughs> she got a pretty okay reward. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... I'm going to assume, or I'm going to pretty much say what she got uh, with the intention that her abilities are plus. Uh, you can plus her abilities by um, getting five stacks of her Dull Master. Uh, it's pretty easy to do with LD, and we'll talk about LD. But uh, when they're plus, her skill one has three HP dumbs that ign it ignores defense, and her skill two also has three dumps. And uh, it has high turn rate, and it provides the party with a fire enchant. Uh, her LD. Her LD has seven full HP dumps. Oh, uh, her skill one and skill two, like, they're three dumps, but they're all split. Uh, her LD has seven full HP dumps, and it gives her a free skill use after. It also maxes out her dull master, so you can more or less uh, piece the puzzle together on what you want to start off with. And then there's her EX. So her EX, it, at the time when it got plussed, it had five dumps. With her C85, it stays five. <laughs> <laughs> five split. It doesn't even. It doesn't even upgrade to full. That that would have been pretty helpful, but uh, it's still five split. And it also gives her a buff. Well, it always gave her a buff, but uh, the buff got an add-on. It gives her self, brave, and HP damage 30%. It it, it, uh, it helps her out a bit. It's not party-wide, unfortunately, but, you know, it helps her out at least. With her LD, Dollmaster also got some add-ons. Uh, I forgot to go over that. I apologize. Uh, Dollmaster gives the party 40% and brave. 5% I brave, 25% <laughs> HP damage, and brave region based on 60% of I brave, which I'm sure the 5% I brave will uh, definitely make a difference. <laughs> uh, pros and cons. Um, she has two sources, or I guess maybe three sources of fire enchant. Uh, her skill 2 gives a uh, fire enchant to the party as a framed buff. Her EX buff gives a fire enchant as an aura to the party. And her LD makes it so that uh, if a character does any sort of elemental damage, it just slaps fire on top of it. So, you know, I guess she just wants to make the world burn or something. <laughs> uh, her EX and LD... Oh, actually... Oh. I think she's just easy to play. <laughs> That's <all the> <laughs> I, guess, I guess she also has unique uh, weapon. That is something that um, we can leave in the pro section just to, you know, put in there and make it look uh, neat. Uh, cons. Um, I guess uh, this is going to play into FR with uh, elements getting shut down. If Lulu's on the field, you're only going to be dealing with fire damage. And to my knowledge, currently... I don't think there's any FR where fire is needed at all. Frosca? Uh, I don't know if Cross can correct me on that. Frosca? <laughs> 
Well, I don't think the FR require or like the FR required it. Like if you weren't dealing fire damage, were you doing ones? No, right? But anyway, uh, moving on. I, I guess so, yeah. But moving on. Um I don't know what they were going with her. Uh it felt like they tried to divide her auras and her damage, but unfortunately. Neither one of them are that great. <laughs> Five percent eye break. You know what? When you showed me that, I was like, "There's no way she only has five percent eye break for the party." Nope, that's actually true. That that five percent. What? <laughs> like what? Yeah. Now keep in mind for context, guys. I have her at five out of five Ultima weapon and the blue armored. Which, by the way, that's another con. She has unity armor. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So it's uh, yeah. This is a character. Uh, I feel like they really lowball the Lulu. She her LD and her EX feels really good. You can make that cap incredibly easy. Everything else. But when it comes to her skills her base skills no they just feel awful <laughs> what do you guys think about lulu if you guys pulled on her well i didn't pull her but if i were to give you an honest answer what i think about her um she's the loser of this month <laughs> oh definitely like uh i feel like she's sacred level she <laughs> she feels thankred levels from what I observe. I don't know. Like I'll be thankful at least that there's a character that I'm that I can skip. So there's that. So thank you, Lulu. But no thanks to those belts, I guess. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, I wish they could have done more. I mean, people highlight that her call is uh, pretty nice. I mean, the only thing I really see with her call over Ignis is that her base call gives the party six turns of fire enchant as the framed buff because it uses um, a fire Mumba. And her LD call puts three turns of that true fire. Do, do we call it true fire enchant? Let's just say, uh, <laughs> let's just say you do fire. Yeah, you do fire. That's uh, <laughs> her LD puts up a uh, an ore for three turns. That's basically you do fire. So it's up for nine turns. So I can see the value on it being used over uh, Ignis. I'd say the only issue with that is during early FR, most people are just going to like burst down the boss with their burst phase the moment they use their BT. So Ignis is enough. I'd say maybe in the later fights she could have value. It's just there's a mediocre character uh, attached to that uh, FR that she buffs. <laughs> Let's just go with that. <laughs> not a very good uh, buff extension. But yeah, I mean, that's nice. But like, when we get later on to the elemental lockout, it's not really going to... It's going to be really bad. <laughs> I think a thing about Lulu too is the fact that they... they so they, So I see what they were going with with making her be a supportive character while also like, you know, having auras. And But like, the thing is that they, they can't seem to get it right with her. It's like either she's lacking damage or she's lacking auras. It's either one of those. And this time it's, it, it's she has damage, she has some damage, but she has no auras. <laughs> yeah, basically. So the well, only no thing I can are, really say well, is no I'm curious. Well, no auras that are mentionable. No, no auras that are like you know meant like memorable to be there to be like oh my god I will use her over this character really. One thing I am curious about is what they're gonna do with boss rush because I predict I don't know if we're gonna get into that but I do predict a uh, enchanter is gonna be on that banner. Probably. And uh, I'm curious if one of I'm curious if one of the bosses is going to have uh, some kind of a uh, fire. Something to do with fire <laughs> to maybe uh, try to make it to sell Lulu, but uh, we'll see. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess the one pro that Lulu has is that she's unique ultimate weapon. So uh, <laughs> if you have that, then uh, good looks. You can use her. Uh, other than that, uh, she's. Um, what do you guys think? What do you guys? What do you guys think about Lulu? I know Blonde and Miria said our piece, but what about you, uh, Indo and Yoshi? Yeah, I feel. 
Um, <laughs> I think I said it already earlier. Like, uh, Lulu oozes the same copium levels as Thancred from my observation. Well, at least she's not no, um, <laughs> two HP dumps. With... <laughs> yeah, fair. Yeah. Yeah, like at least we can say Lulu is trying, guys, <laughs> compared yeah. to Thancred. Like she's yeah, trying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thancred just got a slap on the wrist and was like, "Yeah, this is fine." Yeah, yeah fair. I know, I'm a bit harsh on Lulu because of them, but yeah, I think that's it. That's all I got. I got uh, nothing much. Like, even then, like, if you would go, if you would recommend someone a fire enchant character, I would say most likely the people will recommend you more so towards Ignis. Because not only that he has, like, that the fire enchant, like, he's also going to kind of age well on earlier parts of Shinryu. Okay, Ignis. To, to the whole thing. Yeah, cooking cooking simulator. Cooking oh, no. Ignit. <laughs> cooking Ignit. <laughs> um But uh that's Oh you shouldn't even say his piece. All I say is she's MVP <laughs> to a call. Oh yeah, as a call, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like overall, uh, uh, Lulu is the worst character for this month. I think it's safe to say. Yeah, it is. Uh, but, uh, we got the main event character, who is Shelk, and, uh, uh, I'm sorry to put this on you, Blind Eye, but I have to BRB for a little, for a, li a little bit, like a little bit, but, uh, you mind talking about Shelk first? Oh. oh, yeah, I don't mind at all. Alright, sure, man. Alright, so Shelk got a rework. It is a very, uh, small rework. Uh, her skill one got two dumps on the base version. And I believe that oh no, uh, her skill one got an extra dump on her base for, on its base version. It's still two dumps regardless now compared to before where the base had one. Uh, her skill two got an attachment to it, but it's still two dumps. However, uh, the buff she gets from it, which is her shield, uh, I think it's called Phenomenal Dispersion. I'm totally butchering that name, but the, the shield buff. Uh, now gives her last stand, which is odd, but uh, appreciated. It's definitely not bad, that's for sure. Um, the LD didn't get anything. It's still the same thing. Removes all debuffs from her, and it dispels uh, all buffs from the enemy. So it's it's actually pretty good. Uh, the LD call also does this as well still, so it's a pretty good pickup. The EX is what got buffed uh, a lot. Uh, it used to do five dumps, and now the six, and there's brave gains in between. And it also extends her buffs by two turns. It's all buffs, not uh, her own turns, my bad, unlike uh, Prish. So if you put a uh, aura on her from like a selfie call, it extends that as well. Uh, her AA is worth mentioning here because she's a character that you will use her AA often. It's still one single target dump. It extends uh, all buffs on her by two, and it now gives her 45% attack and 30% brave damage limit. Overall, she's um, really solid. Uh, she's one of these turn hoggy DPSs, but she's very self sufficient. Like, she puts a shield on herself, she has last stand, um, she has, I believe, 40% HP damage up from her EX buff and from her. Um, Overhead, uh, Shulk the Transparent. Uh, pros and cons. She's a melee attacker that takes a lot of turns. Uh, unlike turn hoggers, uh, that they don't want to give the enemies turns, uh, she actually functions well giving the enemy turns. Because <laughs> uh, how she works essentially from her overhead is whenever the enemy acts, she gets a free turn immediately after. So it's sort of like realm or even eldnarsh uh to that extent where she just turn hops and gets a free turn after uh her ld refreshes all of her skill use so she has incredible longevity um she can't be broken uh since she has brave uh retention and she also has that brave shield so it helps a lot <laughs> uh Again, the free turns, she has time to like shave the bot or like shave the boss's brave and deal damage. 
Now when it oh and also for pros, uh, she has unique weapons. So um, I know we talked about what like two characters getting unique weapon. It's gonna keep going, guys. So uh, it it is a pro. It's a top three weapon. <laughs> but my bad yeah. for like constantly repeating myself with that. <laughs> now for cons, uh, many turns. Uh, there are fights like. Bahamut, where there are things to consider when it comes to having tight turn counts like his orb. It is still a con. It's a pro and a con. Like, if you can deploy her because there's no uh, content that requires um, anything strict, she's amazing. But when you do have something to consider like Bahamut, it can feel pretty uncomfortable. Her role is pretty much just a damage dealer, so it could be... Uh, that could be something to consider. Her LD Dispel is tied to her LD, and that's only three use. So she's definitely not going to be your primary Dispeller. It's something you're going to have to play around. Like, maybe bring a Ferris Call to help out with it. But that thing is only three use, so it is limited. And then on top of that, to talk, uh, talk about her LD, her LD does remove buffs from her. And that does include ally buffs. So some things that come to mind would be Selfie's Aura to upkeep her uh, EX. You would have to essentially reapply that. Another one could be uh, Kai's uh, Hero Support. Like, it's up for 8 turns, and obviously she can't extend it, but it is an important buff that she can, uh, that she can cleanse. And uh, that's basically it off the top of my head that she could uh, cleanse. I guess maybe Ash's Queen's Order she could uh, cleanse as well. <laughs> and that's basically it. Uh, what are your guys' thoughts on uh, Shell? Did you pull her? Did you already have her? And uh, what do you think of her if you've used her? Um, not gonna lie though, I really wish I, I was able to pull for Shell on her initial release. But unfortunately, Zidane ate a lot of my my resources so i i wasn't able to pull for her because she she seems quite the very interesting type of a uh, turn hogger you already mentioned it but yeah i really like the the i, I really like the notion that she's a the type of turn hogger that that also encourages uh encourages the the player to let the the enemies get get turns and whatnot she's from what I've been able to witness from other people playing Shell, she does look very fun and very fun. And uh, I think I'm gonna add that uh, her LD call is also very nice as well. Like uh, it's gonna heal the caller, it'll remove the debuffs, and as well as like removing the enemy buffs as well, as well as probably my the my main selling the main selling part for. Shelk's LD call is to like oh shit wait what the fuck, the fuck. Uh, ignore that noise um the main the main selling point for Shelk's LD call is that she can easily fill up your e ex ex skill and whatnot and since today is the C90 era that that niche of being able to fill up that ex ability is ve quite very handy and that's the sole reason that uh I mean not just that but I really like the the buff dispelling as well the buff dispelling aspect that part of uh shell made me uh finally give in and since i'm overflowing with tickets i eventually pulled for shell and yeah that's all i can say about shell to be honest because i haven't tested her out tested her up in the waters lately aside from the lufenia mission and whatnot but she does look interesting it's it's just unfortunate though that characters like her like her and the uh, realm and Eldnarsh would be, would be having a hard time with the the way Shinryu works and whatnot. But hey, there's still time. There's still a few Lufenia Plus stages to go. Maybe you'll be able to have fun with Shell while that's. That's all I can say about Shell. Looking forward I to have... try. It. I have seen early Shinryu results with her, but it's been more so them not having an FR or them bringing a friend yeah. FR. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess if you're one of those guys that wants to, you know, maybe hold out um, until Cam or Titus, um, you can maybe try and make Sh uh, Shulk work to, you know, 
patch yeah. up that amount of power that they want you to bring, which is essentially an FR. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a fair, fair play as well. Like, I've seen people run Realm in early Shinri stages. So, maybe Shelf can also work. I think that the other selling point for me for Shelf, in terms of being in the party member, is that she's very self-sufficient. She's, she's a very self-sufficient character from what I've seen. Especially with her... Probably one of the rare characters okay, who guys, can I'm back. Sorry give herself... Okay, guys, I'm Hold up. Alright. All right. Uh, we're still about Shelk, I guess. Yeah. Listen, Blind already got you guys hooked up all the details and stuff, so I don't think I need to go over anything. Um... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good shit, Blind Eye. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you want my opinion about Shelk, she's... She's fun. I will say, she is fun. She is fun to play. I got her a while back when she first came out on a free daily, and I just said, you know what, might as well just go for her EX, right? And I got her EX, and that's how I got Vayne's VT. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, let's go, let's have her spin. I never used her on her C80 version. I only really used her C90 version, but she is fun to play. I will say that, and she is pretty solid. Uh, funny enough that I can add, um, I used her in Safer Sephiroth, uh, before she got her C90. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, she's still fun uh her base skill getting an extra hp dump is pretty much off she got oh and an extra dump on her uh hp she was still pretty usable but now she's uh up to date i'd say maybe during safer sephiroth she was having a little a uh, bit of a problem capping her uh brave damage since like obviously with the c90s the exs now give like a ridiculous amount of brave damage some characters even get brave gains uh, as well, so like their brave gains are higher, and she does have brave gains uh, throughout her kit. So, um, yeah, no, uh, her C80 version was good. Obviously, C90 is better, and it tuned her uh, pretty well compared to her banner mate. <laughs> her yeah, and that's uh, about it with Shulk. Uh, as I don't. The thing about this banner, right, is uh, it's like Shulk is really good, but I don't know if I would tell people to play to to like pull for her. Yeah, yeah. To be fair though, Shulk is more appealing for me to pull on than Lulu. Probably, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, like I, I don't even know if I would even recommend someone who's looking for like a turn hogger to go in because like Trish isn't exactly a turn hogger yeah. but she is pretty fast <laughs> yeah. and her banner has what was it Fran and I mean Fran they're also getting like Fran's LD call or her as a main unit because I mean if you're starting the game out like Fran will serve you well it's just but later on you're probably gonna uh, put her in the bench, and she'll be a call at, at best. <laughs> yeah, that's all I can say as well. I mean, yeah, just like what MF mentioned, that this is a sad banner overall. Hey, at least we got another banner we can skip on, right? Like, we can <laughs> get our resources ready for Shinri and whatnot, I guess. That's true. I mean, I'm pretty uh, glad this banner was kind to me. <laughs> I mean, you're it a only good player. It only you're a good cost player. me 5k, man, so good players get the <laughs> weapon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if only everyone gets to be a good player. But yeah. Yo, Cross, are you here? Uh, I guess maybe something happened. I guess we can go over uh, the Ooh. boss as well. So, um... <laughs> So this boss uh, is the same as the event, uh, the helicopters, and uh, helicopter, not helicopters, I'm sorry. Uh, we're fighting a helicopter and he summons a mini FF7 robot thing. <laughs> uh, that thing is very squishy. The sweep, it has the sweeper. The sweeper. sweeper, there we go, yeah. yeah. I didn't know off the top of my head its name. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure most people knew, knew what I was talking about. I remember, I remember the name solely because uh, I keep needing to press the sweeper because uh, the car the the camera angle for this fight is very horrendous. Like holy shit, I need to like <laughs> hard press the shin the sweeper and whatnot because the characters are blocking the way. 
So that's why I remember the name. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> anyway, the Sweeper doesn't have too much HP, and the boss has some mechanics compared to its predecessor. <laughs> so uh, basically, while the Sweeper is active, the boss has perfect uh, dodge, meaning you uh, can't hit him. Uh, right now, we have certain characters that can hit him, but we'll get more on that later. But uh, basically, as long as the Sweeper is up, uh, the boss cannot get hit. The Sweeper has... Uh, Xcal can correct me since he's in chat. Uh, I want to say it has 2 million HP. It might be 3 million, but it falls over pretty quickly. And then the boss, I believe in total, has 24 mil. And again, Xcal can correct me since uh, he actually, you know, does this. Check out his YouTube. But uh, overall, the fight is uh, really dull, as uh, MF in chat said. Uh, I will say, before, when this came out as an event, a popular strat was to bring a paralyzed unit at the time, Agrius, to um, stun it. So that way, when it would summon the Sweeper, like he would still summon it. But he would still be hittable uh, because, you know, he would... I believe it was he would do a skill to put himself in perfect dodge. Now it's an aura. And I believe the boss also has immunity to uh, paralysis. However, there's a certain character that bypasses it. Oh, it's confusing. Mm, yeah. There is a certain character that can bypass it. Mm. So, you know, mm. Waka fans, you know, you, if it rise up. Now, Ooh. unfortunately, or no, the plus side. I did bring yeah. Waka in here as my initial clear. The downside is when he summons Sweeper with confusion, because he specifically had confusion, uh, he was still dodging everything. Oh. <laughs> Oops. So, uh, unfortunately, Waka is not the, the cheat code, but he's still pretty good to bring in this fight. And uh, overall, mm, this fight. This fight sucks. It, Rampled over, yeah. Welcome back, back Ross. I welcome back, bitch. Uh, I mean, what do you guys think of the fight, and what did you guys bring if you wanted to add on anything to the fight? Um, uh, considering we just got Baham, like Divine Bahamut, who is like an HP sponge, this fight is very, uh, uh <laughs> very frustrating to, to say very frustrating because of how quickly it goes down but and the orb is very easy to do unlike the last time where it requires like two skill recoveries this time around the orb is literally just do fire damage and you can even accomplish that with a base lulu call and then like bring some characters that can that can extend buffs and whatnot so i don't know this fight is mm, probably one of an easy example for a garbage time fight. Maybe if I did, if I did the challenge run that Tree Void shall eventually uh, release. Uh, shout out to Tree Void. Like, maybe the maybe I'll see a different perspective. Nah, not really. No, nope. I think the fight, this fight's eh, meh. Like, I brought Vivi. At least this fight made me bring Vivi back. So that's a plus, I guess. Like Vivi was able to easily uh, manage to. Make me not care about the orb, and yeah, I don't know. Fuck, um, in this fight, I, and also like, I think the the hell the dragonfly, yeah, dragonfly. The dragonfly is also not immune to HP silence, so you can like HP silence ah. and whatnot. And there's not. That's, um, a fair, that's a fair point. Yeah, I mean, maybe stall out if you get the sweeper turns. I forgot to mention the orb as well. I apologize. Yeah, it's a fire orb. No and, problem. Uh, yeah, no. Uh, even uh, wow. Jekt, who's probably the oldest fire unit at this point, uh, he still feels really good in here. So, um, yeah, Jekt enjoyers. I mean, don't don't expect much though. Even though you're bringing a C80 character, <laughs> but he feels good. <laughs> I mean, I saw someone. Oh yeah, I remember. I saw G Gobilon. Yeah, shout out to Gobilon. He brought like a base BT jack, like it's not green, and he he did the job well. He did what yeah. he has to do. <laughs> and yeah, this, I mean, it's on this fight, which is not a hard thing to accomplish. 
Like, I managed to bring I'm seven to up. This, I'm gonna tell you guys this shit right now. This fight infuriated me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I can tell. Like, did, I managed to bring did, seven up to Kyorg. <laughs> how did we go from Divine Bahama to this? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, that's, that's basically what I said. I'm like, you know, compared oh, to us, that is faster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that too. <laughs> oh my god. Like, mm. you know, it's just basically forges or damages you know, up to date now. <laughs> Yeah, you know, at something. least we can hope, at least we can hope, you know, the predecessor, you know, it was pretty good. You know, let's hope the successor after this is pretty good as well. <laughs> MF was able to brought another interesting point as well, that there are some characters who can, uh, like, characters that have guaranteed hits can uh, fulfill, can... Okay. We'll be able to like uh, make the evasion or yeah, like not noticeable yeah. alone. Characters like uh, Saz and Cyan, yeah, Cyan's LD. Mm. Because if you try, <laughs> does Cyan's S one and S two uh, bypass the evasion? It's been Have... proven that at least the call does not. Yeah. I don't know if his actual skills do. I can check that. Yeah, no. No, you don't need to check because I checked back then and the the base call missed. <laughs> the base base call missed. I think I'll give another fun fact like a uh, lion's bully follow up also is also guaranteed hit, but only the bully follow up. And by the way, who I don't know who cares. No one uses lion. So y'all remember when um this fight first came mm -hmm. out? And, yeah, uh... Agris. Yeah, ag the Agrius cheese is like the most you strategy for this fight. You know what I don't get? Yeah. Is that how do you make the boss immune to confusion, right? All right, all right. The most cheesiest way to deal with that. All right, cool. Yeah, you did that. But then they were probably thinking, you know, we don't need to give the boss his HP. You don't need to. The sweeper, nah, just give it 2 million HP. Glad that they don't do that much damage already. Oh, the main boss, 24 million HP. You know, it's not like it's not like we literally had Divine Muhammad, which had, you know, six million, like sixty million HP. Yeah, and we have more fights to come. They'll have more. And then, I think they're trying to. Go ahead. I they're think they're trying to make up for it to, like, get hit the boss for the time. That's so bullshit. I mean, at least there's like. Uh, they think it's all out of thirty-four mil. They get hit the sweeper like five times. Yeah, five. There's five of the sweepers. Okay, so very interesting find here. Uh, Cyan's call ability. Not not like you using the call, but like the ability that's based off of it has guaranteed hit, but the call doesn't. It leads yeah. me to believe he might have been one of the early C80 characters, and then the guaranteed hit was part of his rework, but it was never added onto his call, because obviously those don't get buffed unless someone has debuff start. Or buff star to the party. <laughs> what was that? That's an interesting. Yeah. <laughs> also, another thing I, I remember. Know, another thing I remember I is uh, remember when this this orb? I'm not even kidding you, right? Remember when the orb for this fight originally? It was to c recover two skill uses on yeah. the, on the same turn, right? Mm, and that sense. was tricky to hit, right? Because we didn't have that many units who were up to date who can really hit that orb, right? We come back I mean, to this we fight. Have... We come back to this version of the fight. It's just, oh, just do fire damage, not not do fire do fire damage in a certain amount of damage. No, just fire damage. You know how yeah. easy it is to hit fire damage in this game. Yes. You can ignore the orb yeah. too. That's the sad part. Mm -hmm. I'd say maybe what they were going with this is since they were selling Lulu and Shulk, who in hindsight, well, I mean, Shulk, I get. Well, actually, Lulu too. But, like, their base skills have very poor HP damage. They were probably like, you know what? We're selling these characters that have, like, at max three dumps. Shulk, I guess, if you consider her free turns four. Like, they they, they probably just lowballed it just because of the amount of dumps that the featured characters have. Uh, we'll have another orb like that this month. Bro, uh, Sizes event, that boss has 8 million HP. It's literally Rem's IW if you put two single target. It does, I'm not even kidding you, right? It's Rem's IW if you minus the fact that it's not mannequins. 
in the simple fact that Sykes can solo her own event. <laughs> it's just as bad as Rem IW. Crazy. Again, I don't... How did we go from hard, challenging content to this, dude? I don't get... I, you know what? I shouldn't be, be bitching anymore because this is like this is actually yeah. like expected. Don't worry. We're, we're almost done with it. We're almost done with it. Thank God. When, we, when we're done with this fucking era, I will be so happy. Yeah, Shinri is almost there, guys. Yeah, One Shinri's more month. There. <laughs> but, um... So in a in a, in a order, right? How would you how would you list said character like the characters, right? Because my list right now is looking like Frish, Yuna, and then probably Shelk is third. Then after that, it's Celeste, and then Fran, and then Lulu. But like these these sets of characters. That's probably agreeable. <laughs> yeah. Oh wait, you uh... mean you mean you mean skill recovery yeah. orb? Okay, my bad. Yeah, the skill recovery on it'll come. I back. think that's King's. Uh, mm, I yeah. Know. Oh, yeah, the, the behemoth. It has no HP. Well, no, it has HP, but uh, you could cheese it. So uh, it's <laughs> it's literally like the fight on Cloudy, the Cloudy event, right? Mm -hmm. The behemoth. Oh, okay. So we already had a, a preview of what to expect. The only difference between that one and the one we're getting later this month is that the one later this month, you can stun it. Oh, and I believe, and I believe, no, I don't believe the robot was uh, present. The freaking yeah, turret, no, I it was just, just one, one lone behemoth. Yeah, one lone behemoth. <laughs> and that's the Lufania Plus. <laughs> I, want, I, want, I don't know what, like, for the last Lufania Plus, you know, you would think it would go out with a bang, right? You know, it would at least be, nope. like, challenging, right? Nope, they were just like, here. Take this giant, take this behemoth that has like over 40 million HP. I, in fact, I think it only has 40 million HP. Take this behemoth and just beat it up. Yeah, go get yourself a behemoth stay. Bro, stay at least, bro, at least chaos ended off in like a okay. Well, not really, because Arden kind of made chaos a joke. Uh, what's it called? At least chaos ended off on a decent note. Every other era ended off a decent note. Lufinia Plus was just like, man, let's save you a fight that just you know. Just rolls over and dies. It, it's not even two behemoths. It's just one. At least Whoa. global global's chaos ended on a high note for me because it was Vivi's abyss, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's well, personally for me, I came back before chaos was almost over. Or over practically, I'd say probably like chaos ended for me with Trey, just because like they introduced LD and BT, and by then it was just like. Yeah, for, for fun. Like, you didn't need to have, like, an LD and BT. Like, your EX Plus characters were fine. But obviously, if you had the new toys, it made Chaos a joke. <laughs> At least DE20 was challenging. Yeah, DE20 was nice. I like DE20. Uh, yeah. Dimension. Well, the thing is, right, is that Tier 9 is that Tier... The, the Edge Fight app... The, the Edge Fight after Tier 9 was actually challenging because the orb was bugged. The fact that the orb needs to be bugged for the fight to be challenging is so funny to me. But after that, the fight is kind of whatever after they fixed it. But, um... We, we, we gotta get started wrapping up. We have, like, what, two minutes left? <laughs> but, uh... But, uh... Oh, for, yeah. for, so, first cycle is almost done. Can't wait for that boss rush. Uh, hopefully it's challenging. Or at least something. Um... I bet I see it just die, just die in one hit, <laughs> just just sit there and die in one hit. Yeah, nice fight, guys. Um, speed run any percent. Yeah, speed run any percent. No, you know I feel like there's someone. If, if if like, could you imagine if we were able to extend our uh, YouTube titles? Because the max you can have is like a hundred words, right? Could you imagine if someone extended their shit to be like um, the boss event, and it's like no boss turns, no synergy, no super synergy, no BT. Speed run any percent. <laughs> no LD, yeah, just, all that shit. Yeah. Just put a fucking essay as your title. Yeah. Because why? But, uh, but uh, we're gonna start wrapping up. Uh, Endo, closing thoughts. Um, I was initially here solely. I thought because we're gonna discuss size, but it was actually for another episode. So. <laughs> 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 Uh, yeah, that's one, uh, one, I close the thoughts. 
All right, guys. So we got a uh, a pretty nice FF10 character and a pretty low balled one. But you know, next month <laughs> we're gonna get about five of them, and for the most part, you know, uh, more than half of them at least are pretty good. So you know, look forward mm -hmm. to that. Yeah. Have a good night, everybody. And uh, Yoshi, what about you? Close it off. Yeah, I just wait for Vincent BT. <laughs> <laughs> hey, at least he's good. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. uh, or thank you guys. Give it for... the king. Give it the give... king. Oh god. Oh, well, okay, king is not terrible. It's just that uh, yeah. I don't. I don't know what to say about him. But uh, yeah. I'll, I'll talk about him when I whenever uh, we get to that historia crux. But uh, yeah. What's it called? This has been episode thirty-eight. We're almost at episode fifty. I wonder what I'm gonna do for the fifty oh. episode. Yeah, we're actually almost at episode fifty. We've been doing the show for like a couple of months actually. I think I started this shit in September. Yeah, September. Oh. But um, we are next. We are next historia crux. We're gonna be talking about the boss rush, and we're also gonna be talking about size. And then uh, after that one, it's tier nine and then edge. And then the last one for the Lufania Plus, I might just make it, you know, a, a recap, like a whole retrospective of the, uh, the era. Cause I mean, like there's nothing to talk about after the heretic, <laughs> but yeah. hope you, uh, hope you guys enjoyed the stream. Uh, if anyone wants to time step it on YouTube, which I, I don't think anyone's going to, but if anyone wants to, then go ahead and do it. But uh, we're going to catch you guys next Tuesday, and we will see you for, like I mentioned before, Sice and Boss Rush. If anyone's playing for Boss Rush, I wish you good luck, and have a good night, and take care. Make sure to, eh, on the Twitch side, which everyone's watching on the Twitch side, well, most people are watching the Twitch side, make sure to follow. If you're watching the YouTube side, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. All right, I need to stop. <laughs>